Our passion didn't start with the mouth. It started with people, with the well-being of the profession. And if you're like me, maybe a little bit of your nerdiness in all things tech too. We all want to love what we do, but the truth is burnout, people problems, and glass ceilings can keep us from doing what we set out to do. So let's get back to the heart of connection. Welcome to the Dental Handoff. This show is about passing you the knowledge, the habits, the systems, and the strategies to lead your teams, lean on the tech, and listen to your gut while you take care of teeth. And let's get honest, the overall health of our communities. Let's stop using the wrong end of the toothbrush, y'all. My name is Dr. Kelly Tanner. Oh, and uniquely, I'm a dental hygienist, too. You can consider me a guru in the dental and leadership industry. With over three decades of experience, my goal is to take you to the next level by empowering growth, perspective, and confidence. By identifying the gaps, recognizing the plaque, and extracting the truth with other experts in the field. I'll share their stories, empower you to own yours, and elevate your passion in the process. So have a seat in the chair, put on your bib, and let's get to work. Welcome to the Dental Handoff. Today, guess who I have with me? One of my friends, my dear friends and colleagues, Dr. Mark Hyman. Go ahead and say it, go Tar Heels. Go Tar Heels, man. Big game Saturday night. Cannot wait to thump Duke. Yeah, here we go. I just wanted to go ahead and get that out of the way. because now, now we can talk. <laughs> Dr. Kelly, what a treat to be here. Enjoy to see you. Thank you. Always a joy to see you too, Mark. You just got back from Hinman. I did. The Hinman Dental Meeting in Atlanta, Georgia, usually third weekend of every March. Uh, just one of the greatest dental meetings in the world. This was, I think, the 109th Hinman. I've had the privilege of speaking there since the year 2000, about 14 times. And soon they're going to have Dr. Kelly Tanner speaking there. So that's going to be exciting. Can't wait. Riding on your coattails, Dr. Mark. Are <laughs> Um, what do you tell us what you speak, what you speak about mostly? Oh God. You know, I'd like to just set myself on fire and watch myself burn. That's really the truth. <laughs> Please don't do uh, that. I did four talks at Hinman. I did a brand new talk, which was called the cases that haunt you. And I basically went through my career and showed every case that I face planted on that, that I had documented every major mistake, misjudgment, didn't get a good pre-op model, didn't get good radiographs didn't speak to the specialist. So that was a really cool seminar. Then I did a three hour talk with a dental hygienist who becoming a world-class private practice hygienist. And I had about 500 hygienists in the room and it was pretty daunting because I knew every one of them was smarter than me. And then I was the closing speaker for the dental assisting extravaganza. And then the last seminar I did was another brand new talk, which was called the questions you hate, the quest answers you'll love. So what is the most inane difficult things that patients ask of us chair side? What are the most intimidating in your face things patients say to us and how do you answer it intelligently? So it was a fun course and I, I love being at Hinman. It's a great meeting. Yeah. Wow. Great course. You always come up with the best names too. You've been, you've been doing this for a while. A little bit. Yeah. Talk to us about, you know, did you, did you go to dental school at UNC? Like, tell me a little bit about that. Um, I, am a, about I thought you'd never ask. I am a, <laughs> Kelly, I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina. <laughs> and I applied to one college, which was UNC. I started undergrad in 1976, the bicentennial year and loved my time at Chapel Hill. Then I got into dental school at UNC. My sophomore year at UNC, we won the national championship. Had a freshman from Wilmington, North Carolina named Michael, Michael Jordan. So I used to tell my patients that Mike and I were classmates. Um, actually graduated dental school in three and a half years, which they don't let you do anymore because we want that last tuition payment. And I went to Israel, moved to the Holy Land, and I grew a beard and grew my hair long and spent four months as a volunteer dentist just north of the Sea of Galilee in Israel. And my last week there, I was in the Jerusalem bus station and met my wife. So as of last month, we have been married 37 years. So those of you with teenagers, you know, as I describe as 10 of the happiest years of my life, and then the teenagers kicked in and, <laughs> and you survive. And uh, then I had 32 years of private practice, which I adored. I absolutely loved it. I uh, basically bought a bankrupt practice July 1st, 1986, made it worse. 
And then I heard Ms. Linda Miles speak my third month of private practice, who changed my life. Linda Miles, Dr. Kathy Jamison became my coach from Oklahoma. Dr. Erwin Becker from the Panky Institute, Dr. Gordon Christensen from Provo, Utah. They were kind of my, my Mount Rushmore of my dental mentors, and all of them took a special interest in my career, and it was amazing. And, uh, and after 32 years of private practice, I sold the practice, and I've been teaching at the UNC Adams School of Dentistry in Chapel Hill, where I'm an adjunct full professor and special assistant to the office of the dean. So I'm basically a jack of all trades at the school. I do a little curriculum advising teach practice management, leadership, diagnosis, treatment, planning, case presentation. I'm on the admissions committee. I'm faculty advisor for Alpha Omega, the Jewish dental fraternity. So it's just a really, it's a wonderful time in my life, Kelly. It's really cool for me to see young superstar speakers like you starting their career and watching you blast off and seeing so much talent in the profession with young speakers. It warms my heart knowing that future dental education is going to be just fine. Oh, thank you for your kind words. And it, it helps to know that you have people who you can go to that you can trust for that sage advice, because it's advice just isn't good from anyone. It's who's done it, who's done it well, who's made mistakes, who will share those yep. and tell you how they overcame them and tell you the, the should say, should not says, kind of guide you along that along that process. And I know that you take a big part of that at UNC. And then also yep. you just recently, I saw in pictures on Facebook that you brought some students along with you to UNC as well. Yeah, I only brought 52 fourth year dental students down to Hinman in Atlanta. Uh, it was the highest number of any Southeast dental school, any dental school in the country. And next year, we're going to try to bring the entire fourth year class down. So, And they were just fabulous and they learned a ton and they got to meet many of the men and women that you work with in the speaking world as well. And it just was really cool. So um, I'm honored to be on your show, Kelly. I admire you for so many reasons. You're one of the few hygienists that have a PhD, which is just daunting to me. And I think you've really uncovered the future of how you deal with teammates with your EQI work. So I think that's amazing. For me, I had 32 years of private practice. The hygienist that I worked for, that's the way I describe it. The hygiene team I had, they were so smart and so talented. And so they gave me such love and care and support and trust. Um, one of my hygienists was with me. My first hygienist, when I bought the practice, July 1st, 86, the receptionist quit six weeks after I started. I fired the chain smoking hygienist, had one employee left. Don't you love it when that happens? <laughs> and I hired a woman, Cheryl, who said, I'll give you two weeks. She stayed 14 and a half years. My first assistant that I had stayed eight and a half years. And my first receptionist stayed five years till she had a baby, moved to California. Then I had my dream team where my hygienist, Carla Jean Smith was with me 15 years. Elena Barringer Ivy was with me 15 years. Lauren Fuquay Gardner was with me 14 years. They again gave me such love and loyalty, and their talent was just sensational. And so I just would go from room to room telling jokes and watch the team crush it. My hygienists were so skilled and they were masters with the intro camera. It, Kelly, if I would just say one thing to your audience, it's the single thing I can teach any audience is the power of photography. Oh, for sure. So we had eight operatories with eight intro cameras, and we took pictures on every patient for every procedure before, during, and after. And that is the single most important thing I can teach anybody because we're a visual society. We are. And I, I would never go into a hygiene room where my hygienist didn't have a photo up of some needed treatment or before and after the lower anterior tartar after they've scaled and say, well, so why do I need to come back in three months? I'm like, you don't need to do anything, but is it important that you keep your teeth? And if it is, look here, you're infected. Look what our hygiene team did to get you disinfected. Would you like to never look this way again? So very humbly, you've already figured this out, Kelly. I was just a, an average guy that got extraordinary coaching and hired these magnificent women and I bought the right equipment and I had a ton of training, a ton of two education. Our practice ended up top 1% in the United States wow. and I loved it. So I love my time in private practice, loved getting to make a difference in people's lives. And um, I know you and I are from the South, so it's less of a stretch, but I had at least five, four generation families in my practice where I got to see great grandma, grandma, parent, great grandchild. And that, that was such a joy that families would put your trust and faith in you. 
and bring generations to you for dental care. And uh, that's what I wish for my students and for people watching this dental handoff today is if you say to me, well, Dr. Mark, I don't have a practice like that. I don't believe in no, I believe in not yet. Okay. And you just can't tell me that everybody watching today can't improve what they're doing one degree, one percent, that they can't make little changes that make a colossal difference. So Absolutely. I was very, very blessed. Absolutely. Well, you took it looked like you saw an opportunity, too. So you were you were able to say, I need help. I need assistance. Right. Um, Linda Miles, can you help me? You know, Jameson, can you have all the all the folks who you called in too? because that's something that takes it inside of, you have to look inside of yourself to say, what am I lacking to need support with it? You have to set your ego aside. Kelly, a great way to put it. And for the, those like you who do coaching, if you go to someone who thinks they already know it all, it's going to be a tough gig for you where I recognize very crystal clearly what my shortcomings were. The people part of dentistry, I was really good at that. That was an easy thing for me to sit down and have a conversation with somebody. And the clinical dentistry, I was good at it. I wasn't an artist, but I was a grinder. But the systems in the practice, I did not have a sense of how to run a business and how to do policies. One of my biggest shortcomings is basically our level of case acceptance was 99%. I could get anybody to say yes, because I didn't ask yes or no questions. I'd give them a choice of two yeses. Kelly, do you want this done in gold or white? Do you want morning or afternoon? What works for your family? And then as soon as Dr. Kelly said, yes, boom, I would get the tooth prepped. And then the team would go, where are the written financial arrangements? And I'm like, but, 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 but I did the production. And they're like, yeah, we're not getting paid. So that's one of the gifts that Jameson said is as soon as Dr. Martin got the yes, I had to take my gloves off and pick my happy butt out of the chair and leave the operatory and let the team get the written financial arrangements. They may apply for care credit. It took 30 seconds chair side, whatever it was. They'd have the DigiDoc photos of the patient for the our business team to file the insurance as patients had it or not. So that was an example of a system that was pretty fractured because I didn't know any better or I just thought it was enough that patients said yes to me. I'm sure they're going to pay. Yeah, you think? Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Pull your mic over just a little bit, Dr. Mark. That, that was pretty cool. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I got you back. Okay. Yeah, it's – um, but but let's back up even further because – it's about putting ego to the side. It's about acknowledging who you need to be. But then you stepped out of the way to let people, because I think this is the missing piece, to let people step into their strengths. And for those those that, those team members to feel like they have autonomy in that practice because they stay with you for a long time. And Unbelievable. What was, different? what was different about your practice? You know, I think it was the way I was raised. I saw my mother and my father were very appreciative of the folks they worked with. And I figured out early on that I mean, I've had dental students say, I'm going to rule my practice with an iron fist. And I said, you're going to rule by yourself, Yertle the turtle. That doesn't, it doesn't work. So I realized the power of the team. I, my first dental assistant was number one in her dental assisting class. And she was sitting chairside, suck and spit. And I was like, do you ever make a provisional? She said, no. So would you like to learn how? She's like, yeah. I showed her once she was better than I was after one time, I'm like, great. Now I don't have to do that. So I try to talk to my audiences and to my students at UNC about focusing on CEO, chief executive officer duties only, do doctor only procedures and have the team do everything else. So for me to do a crown buildup in our practice, we would put the topical on. I would use buffered anesthesia from the onset on pharma company. Onset is the product. Patients numb in 90 seconds. I put in an isolite. We had eight operatories with eight isolites. I would do the prep, the build up, and walk out of the room. My assistant would pack the cord, scan the procedure with our CERAC machine, design it, mill it, try it in, pre-cementation, radiograph, etch it, bond it, and call me back in the room. So for me to do a crown and build up in private practice, it was about 30 minutes of doctor time start to finish for about a $1,500 fee. So you start doing the math on that. And it's like, that's a pretty profitable hour if you can work like that. Oh, heck yeah. And then why would my assistant go work at another practice and sit there and suck spit when she could play with a $100,000 CAD CAM machine? And they were young and bright and they just, all of my teammates, every woman that I worked for, Dr. Kelly, had worked for another practice, left them and came to me and stayed. 
My assistant, Athena Escobedo Calloway, only stayed with me 19 years. My lead receptionist, Ms. Mary Catherine Ward, was only with me 25 years. So again, we had a dream team, Kelly. We went almost a 15 year period with no turnover in the office to speak of. And That's unheard of. That's Jameson crazy. put in our systems and we just crushed it. And uh, it was a joy. We did a lot of continuing education together. I took the team to the Hinman in Atlanta, to state meeting at Myrtle Beach, mm -hmm. South Carolina, to Orlando. We went to Vegas several times. We went to San Francisco for the ADA. So we would basically plan a dream trip every year where I would, the team would come in basically two Friday mornings where everything we made that day would go into the kitty for the trip. Like when we went to Vegas, we got landed in Vegas. I picked them up in a limousine. There was champagne and roses waiting for them. We cruised around Vegas. We went to Cirque du Soleil O at the Bellagio. We ate at Chicago. <laughs> we just had a blast. And um, doctors have said to me, Dr. Mark, that cost a lot of money, didn't it? And I'm like, aren't you 50 shades of stupid? I'm sorry. What do you think they talked to the patients about for the next three months? You won't believe what Dr. Mark did for us. And so it just built the esprit de corps in the office. It built the joy. You know, I fully funded our 401k plan every year for the team. When they had a birthday, I took the teammates out for lunch. Everybody, uh, every July 1st, which was the anniversary of starting to practice, each teammate got a rose for every year they were with me. Uh -huh. Somebody that had a baby, when it was their baby's birthday, I'd buy them a Barnes & Noble gift certificate to take their critter to Barnes & Noble to buy a book. Dr. Kelly, what's that message? You're a parent. What's the message? He's investing in me. And is education the key? And education is, yeah. You know, that's the way you and I ended up with the privilege of the podium that we have is because we educated ourselves and pushed ourselves to continue. You could have stopped with your hygiene degree. You went forward for a PhD. Besides you and Rella Christensen, I, there's got to be a handful of hygienists in the country that have PhDs. It's amazing. Thank you. And um, it makes me really proud for myself. I focused on continuing education. I got my fellowship at the Academy of General Dentistry and my mastership award. So I tell my students, I set a goal of 100 hours of continuing education every year. People say, Dr. Mark, that costs a lot of money. My students at UNC know when someone says that, the answer is compared to what? That costs a lot of money if you go to Panky Institute. Compared to what? Compared to you don't go and then you can't do the comprehensive cases. Yeah, good. Wow. An intro camera in every operatory, that's a lot of money. Compared to what? Then you got a picture of every patient, every procedure before, during, and after. You don't have to file any more pre-denials with an insurance company because right. you got the evidence for why you did the procedure. Exactly. Why'd you do the scaling root plane? You could put your perio probe in a pocket, take a photo of that, do before and after of the tartar. That's your evidence. So... You're going to have to teach me how to say that right, Kelly, but I think it's more it's, fun. It's, you're doing great. It's more fun that way. Yeah, it is more fun that way. So I hear you also saying that you're rewarding, you have group goals that were probably co-created with the team as well, because I think that that goes a long way. That everyone's going in for a, a team goal. Also, you have leading edge technology yeah. that people are getting very interested in. They feel like they're making a difference. They feel like they are stretching their knowledge and growing with you in that practice. And it makes them very proud. It gives them that sense of loyalty to you. I love the way you put that. To me, if a teammate came to me, Dr. Kelly, mm -hmm. the answer was yes, what's the question? If you're going to come to me saying, Dr. H, Dr. Mark, I, I, I got a heavy heart. I need something. What am I going to say? No, I want you to use the old Cavitron to do extraordinary scaling root planning. I don't want to send you these courses to learn how to do new things. It's crazy. So that, that to me was a part of my management leadership style was basically, if you come to me, the answer is yes. What's the question? Because Kelly, are you going to come to me and ask something destructive of me? Are you going to come to me and ask me something that's going to damage the family, that's going to damage the practice? No, you're not going to do that. Not if you have worked with these folks for 10, 15, 20, 25 years. They're like your family members. You're not going to try to hurt somebody. So it, it became really cool. And again, I used to love when people would say to me, you just got lucky. You hired these great people. I'm like, yeah, but every one of them worked for someone else. They were these priceless gems that somebody didn't value, didn't polish, didn't shine up. And I just took good care of them. Our office Hanukkah Christmas party, Kelly, I'd pick the, the team would come to my house. My wife would have a wine and cheese party for them. Then I'd pick them up in the limo. We'd go to the local shopping center. They'd each get a gift certificate with one hour to spend the money or I got the money back. 
Oh. In 42 years, Kelly, you know how much money I got back? Zero. Zero. I couldn't figure out how they spent so much so fast. <laughs> Finally, they got outed. They did layaway. Oh. It took me years to figure that out. Layaway? Like, they oh did my layaway gosh. at the shopping oh, center. Layaway. And the limo was cruising around, and they'd say, stop here, and they'd run into a store and run out with it. And I'm like, how'd you guys spend so much so fast? And then we'd go to a five-star restaurant. And again, people would say, it cost a lot of money. I'm like, your mama. Look at the goodwill it created. <laughs> and look at the bullet that they would take from me. Yeah. Kelly, you teach you, you teach your consulting clients how to be more effective and efficient. On average, my team would add at least two thousand dollars a day to our eight hour workday. Now, if the average dentist works two hundred days a year, a two thousand dollar increase per day times two hundred days. I'm Greensboro Public School System, but I think that's a four hundred thousand dollar increase per year just in stuff. Yeah. Just yeah. in stuff lying around. I mean, the number one requested procedure in dentistry today is tooth whitening, right? Right. So why don't you ask every patient you work on, would you like your teeth white? Yeah. And that's here. what my team did. As they were mixing alginate, they said, would you like your teeth whiter? <laughs> and, um, you know, we bonused in the office and that gave the team ownership further. Uh, the Jameson management set this system up for us and they gave me a range of once we made our number, she said you could bonus the team and the percentage that they suggested that we give was from a 10 to 18% of the profit. Nice. So Kelly, what number did I pick? 18. I like the way you think, young lady. 20. I like that's even better. <laughs> but I was like, you know, you work here. I'm going to spoil you rotten. You can have a great Hanukkah Christmas party. We're going to celebrate your birthday. You get complimentary dentistry. You get continuing education. We're going to profit share to the maximum level the consultant suggested. And I loved it. I was, I was so fortunate, again, that these women gave me such love and loyalty. And um, they're just very dear to me. And that's for people on the dental handoff today if you feel you don't have an office like that yet have a sit down with your doctor with he or she and do the give and the take and say i so appreciate here's five things that you do for us which are fantastic however here's some concerns i have to have your permission to talk about it and you do and i bet you can improve your practice or you may decide to grow elsewhere but either way it's okay yeah, and, and that was my next question. How did you read my mind? It's like we know each other. Or something. A little frightening. I know, but you know, I, I was going to say, what kind of advice would you give to a, a team member just to go to their doc and say, "I'm seeing things"? Because as a as an owner, as a business owner, as a doctor, a leader of anything, you rely on the folks around you to inform you yeah. of what's going on. You have to have that, or else you're dead in the water. People have asked me, Doctor Kelly, about our sick policy in the office. What did I do for sick leave? I was like, well, I didn't pay for it. I paid wellness. If an adult came to me or called me and said, I'm too sick to come in, well, I trust you. I'm not going to say bring a note from your physician. But do you just lay out because the weather's nice and cheat your teammates who you've worked with for 15, 20 years? You don't do that to your family. Right. So we didn't have, I didn't have a problem with people calling in sick at the last minute. You know, that's just, you don't do that to your family. Doctors that are listening to this, that also means you got to spoil your teammate. You take care of them. You set the example because the weather's nice. You don't cancel a full day of patients and go play golf. The men and women that we work for count on us. So that's not a win-win situation. Um, for my teammates, again, I, I would have a 30, 60, 90 day performance review when I would hire somebody. Pro Kelly, Dr. Kelly, probably one of the smartest things I ever did. I would do the initial screening when somebody would come interview in our practice and then they'd come spend a day in the office where we would block out two hours and the team would take them to lunch with my charge card. Oh, wow. And they would come back from lunch basically and go. Hmm. Oh, or, yeah, they yeah, would hire them. Thumbs up or thumbs down. They Because generally we work with women in dentistry and women read women better than men do. Probably the worst hire of my career. I had a woman walk in, former North Carolina basketball coach, Dean Smith, was my hero at his day, the winningest college basketball coach of all time. First thing this woman said to me is, I think Dean Smith is God. And I was like, yeah, I, I guess I think I do too. So I hired her and she was awful. So 
basically the time when I didn't listen to the team is when I got bit in the butt. And so if I just behaved and trusted the process and listened to my teammates, great things happened. I love that. And I love how you, you said that you work for them. Absolutely. I mean, it's the truth. You think about how much time is spent as a hygienist, how much time out of a 50 minutes, 60 minutes, 70 minutes, we had 70 minute appointments in our practice. Dr. Kelly, I thought, yeah, that's wasting a lot of time, isn't it? No, because my hygienists were trained. They use the intro camera. They would take the necessary radiographs at six months and the other six month period, they would do full mouth perio probe on every adult. If it wasn't the perio probing visit, everybody got an intro camera photo. People said to me, Dr. Mark, what if all their dentistry's finished? Then take a picture of the current state of their mouth and go, man, do you look fantastic. Yeah, or right. <laughs> have the patient say, ah, and take a picture of their airway and say, you know what? Your tonsils are so fat, they're touching each other. Your uvula is going down to your gizzard. I wonder if you have an airway issue going on. Have we anyone ever talked about sleep apnea? Yeah. Imagine if your teammates, if your hygienist or assistants for the next six months just took an ah, uh, full mouth photo of the airway of every patient. What, Absolutely. How much sleep apnea could we potentially diagnose? It's just staggering. I know. It, and it's uh, it saves lives. I mean, just all of it with the oral cancer screening that and taking images of mucosa, normal, abnormal, you know, variations of normal as well. So that, that those are all valid points. So giving people the time to also use what, what they have learned and they can apply it to make the difference, I think, too, is what I'm hearing. Yeah. So Dr. Mark, you have, you're still, are you still practicing? Are you, are you on the circuit? You're out changing lives, mm. teaching hundred percent of the time, basically, right? You're. Yep. So I ended up having to sell my practice. My L4, L5 oh. disc is severely bulged out. Mm. So I have carpal tunnel and tennis elbow and severe arthritis. I got good hair. Would you agree? I have great hair. Pass that. I've always, wondered, I've always wondered, is that Mark's real hair? Yeah, you can tug on it here. It's still mine. My, my, uh, my, my, wife do that. Like, tug on his hair for me. She would do it. <laughs> my blessed pop passed away at 90 years old several years ago. He had a pretty full head of hair. It was salt and pepper. My mother's father, my grandfather, Sam, who I named my son Sam for, passed at 96 with a full head of hair. So I think it was these cold Russian winters that are in the genetics that we were protected from. <laughs> but I had to sell the practice because physically I just broke down and that yeah. breaks my heart. Dr. Kelly, I figured I did about 90 years of dentistry physically with the way that we worked and 32 years of private practice. Then I sold the practice to a former student of mine who's a very talented young man. And now I teach full time at the dental school at the UNC Adams School of Dentistry. And I have the privilege of the podium of going around in the seminar speaking world. So I just counted this morning. I've got 36 individual talks this year, which is a little bit nuts. I'll be at the ADA in Houston. I'm hoping some other outstanding speakers will be there as well. Just had the privilege of the Hinman. I'm in Arizona next week. I've got Florida, Delaware, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Illinois, Vegas, Dallas. I just was looking at the list. It's a little yeah. bit stupid, but there, there's, I, I found a small demented following nationwide because <laughs> people aren't used to a male dentist talking about the stuff I talk about. Okay. And I show a lot of mistakes, which I think people find very credible. Yeah. And I'm very humble how things ended up, Kelly. I, I'm, you know, I, was our class president in dental school. I was probably the worst first semester dental student in the history of UNC to the point that the first week back spring semester of first year dental school, I quit dental school. I just was sitting in my apartment trying to cry and nothing would come out. And I just was like, this nightmare is over. And I went to tell the Dean I was going to quit. And he was like, great, go back to class, come back at halftime. We'll sign you out. And I, with my tail between my legs, slunk out of the Dean's office and ran into a young professor Dr. Ron Strauss, who saved my life. And he said, Mark, it's okay. Being a dental student is nothing like being a dentist. Mm -hmm. Just give it another hour. Give it a day. See how you do. I had a decent morning. Went back to the dean, told him I wasn't going to quit, and he acted disappointed. May he rest in pieces. Anyway, 
I muddled my way through the rest of the spring semester, started in clinic that summer, caught fire. Basically, by the end of my third year of dental school, I'd finished all my requirements. So for my fourth year of dental school at UNC, I needed the first week of dental school. I needed eight clinics to finish the whole fourth year requirements. So I had a great fall semester, and then I moved to Israel for four months, came back to graduate, then did the two-year oral medicine hospital dental residency. So I, I had an unbelievable career, Kelly. I loved it. And a lot of people put a whole lot into me. And I, I just so admire what you're doing nationwide and internationally soon to support your hygiene brothers and sisters and to support dentistry with your EQI work. I think you're onto something really special. And um, again, it warms my heart to see young superstars picking up the the mantle and taking the podium and leading the next generation of dentists forward. Cause this is the greatest profession in the world. I absolutely loved my career. I love taking care of patients. I love being Dr. Mark and um, there's storm clouds over the profession, but we can beat them. I know that we can. Oh yeah. We're resilient. And yeah. I, I mean, you're not out of, you're not out of dentistry. You're still speaking about it. You're still, yeah. raising, you're still raising all kinds of kids up into this. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not dead yet. So you have, you still have a lot of years to talk about teeth and health and to lift others up around you. So um, thank you for all that you've done for the profession, for others. For me, I know as a, one of the demented followers that, uh, <laughs> I don't know that I'd brag about that on a podcast. You're going to lose all your viewers. <laughs> but thank you. It's been such an honor. Mark, how did, how did people find you if they want you to come speak with them? or? Well, I, it would be my privilege to speak at study clubs, state meetings, regional meetings. Even individual practices have brought me in for team appreciation events. And my speaking website is Dr. Mark Speaks, D-R-M-A-R-K-S-P-E-A-K-S.com with no, no periods there. My cell phone is 336-456-6728. If somebody's got a dying, burning issue, text me. My wife would prefer I don't get a lot of phone calls at three in the morning, but send me a text at 336-456-6728 and tell me what, what's on your mind or how I can help you. If we went pretty fast here today, Dr. Kelly. We talked about different products and different organizations like Panky Institute. I trained at Spear Education. My time with the Dale Carnegie organization was the most important thing out of dentistry I ever did. Like I said, we invested heavily in equipment and heavily in training for the team. And I just got out of the way and I had just the greatest career that I could have ever imagined beyond anything I could have dreamed of. Yeah. And if I can help be a role model and an inspiration for people, that that's my great gift. Would yeah. appreciate it. Paying it forward. Well, thank you so much for your time. And I'm sure we'll, we'll see you back on our show. At some I'd be, time. be honored and pleased to. So proud of what you're doing, Dr. Kelly. You keep fighting hard. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Mark. Thanks. Be well. See Have you soon. Day.